Hello students, Pascal here, and welcome to video two of our Pymol for Beginners series. If you remember, our first video was just an orientation to Pymol, getting around. Today we'll be looking at labeling of residues. So why don't we get going by uh, opening up our Pymol. And we'll be working with the same protein that we examined last time. So if you remember to open up that protein, we type fetch space, and this was 1RGS, that's the name of this protein, or the PDB code, I should say, for this protein. Um, now we'd like to see it as a cartoon. So if you remember, we type show space cartoon, and then to hide the lines, hide space lines. Now, this protein actually has some ligands bind, bound to it. They are cyclic AMP. So if we'd like to take a look at those under the menu, or sorry, the video menu under S, that stands for sequence, and we can scroll all the way to the end and we see our two ligands, our uh, cyclic AMP here. If we'd like to see these, because right now they're hidden, under selection, so the residues that we've selected, under selection, we can click S for show and go down to stick. Now, let's say we want to see a little bit more contrast. They're sort of colored green right now. Again, under selection, we go to C for color. And let's color it hot pink. So under magenta, and then we'll go down here to hot pink. And that's a nice contrast of colors. Now, let's say we're interested in looking at the residues that are nearby to that ligand. So let's scroll in a little bit, zoom in a little bit, so we can see our, one of our ligands and we can see there's lots of residues around it and we like to name those or at least see what numbers they are perhaps. So the easiest way of doing this is moving over to our 1RGS under L, which stands for label. We have a few options. The Typically, the most useful one is just residues. So under label residues, and this gives us for each residue, it gives us the name and the number of that residue. Uh, if we'd like to get rid of the residues, we would just again go to one RGS, this time to H for hide, and go down to label to hide those labels. Now we could also label differently. Uh, if we go to L for label again, you could label the atom name, which is actually very helpful when you're looking at a ligand to know which oxygen is one, which is two, which is three, and so on. You could label with the residue identifier, which would be the number. You could re uh, label with the residue name, which would be just the name and no number. But usually we find the labeling just residues, which has the name and the number to be the most useful. Now let's say we're interested only in um, certain residues. Here we'll uh, label all of them, but if this would apply if we're only looking at certain residues, and we'd like to use the commands instead. So this first command is quite long, but it does give us exactly what we're looking for. So let's go ahead with that. So we'll start off by typing label space resi space and then we'll look at 113-380 um, so that we'll label residues 113 to 380 and then space and space name space cb for um, beta comma space quotation whoops quotation so the double lines there percentage sign s space dash space percentage sign s uh, quotations space percentage sign space open parentheses r-e-s-n for residue number comma space r-e-s-i for residue identifier and then close the parentheses enter and that will give us like we saw before under L for label and then residues, it gives us all of this information. Now, if we only wanted certain ones, instead of choosing residues 113 to 380, we could have just chosen residues 529 or something like that. Now, let's say we'd like to change some things about these residues. First of all, maybe we're not that happy with the color white and we'd like them a different color. To do that, we would type set space label underscore color comma space and let's choose purple blue so purple blue that's one word according to the naming system of pymol enter and that'll give us a purple blue color for the labels uh, now they are kind of small right now so let's say we'd like them bigger type set space label 
underscore size comma space and I'd like them to be size 20 so I'll type 20 enter and that makes them nice and big a little bit easier to see maybe I don't like the font and I would like to change that so I can type set space label underscore font underscore ID comma and then space and then we can choose a number for the font. If you look online, you can actually see which number corresponds to which type of font. So you can choose between number five to number 14. Any of those will give you different fonts. And if you're looking for a Unicode font, uh, fonts 15 and 16 are that type of font. So let's choose, for example, font eight, and we'll see how that's a little bit different than what we were looking at previously. Let's say we'd like to have an outline of our labels. So right now they're just this purple blue color and we'd like to outline them. To do that, type set space label underscore outline underscore color comma space. Um, and let's say we're gonna choose mm, chocolate, which is a brown color. So chocolate and then enter. And so that color, an outline of a brown color around our purple, which makes them a little bit easier to see. Now, let's say we want to move around some of these labels because they're too busy. Um, so let's say we're gonna zoom in on this section here, but we'd like to maybe move some of these residues. To do that, we need to enter the edit mode. So if we move down to our mouse controls, we can see mouse mode is currently three button viewing. If we click on that, if we, sorry, if we left click on that, it changes to three button editing. So now we're able to actually edit things under here. So let's say we want to move this tyrosine 371 label a little bit closer to the protein. So if we control and left click, then we can drag. So control and left, drag, left click and drag, and we can move our residues wherever we'd like to have them. If you make a mistake. There is an undo button. Um, however, the undo functionality in Pymole is not great. So be really careful that you are moving only the labels and not the actual residues themselves because under this mode, if you control and then click and drag a residue, it will actually move it out of place. So you want to make sure that you're only moving the, uh, the labels. There's also possibility to label the charge, B factor, formal charge, partial charge, and so on. Uh, these are a little bit more complicated and involved a lot of coding, but it is possible and it's easy to find those commands um, if you look them up online. So we won't go into those details, but these are the basic type of labeling that you'll be using in this course. So hopefully this was helpful and hopefully you'll join us for the next video on measurements. All right, bye-bye now.